Black Clover fans last week. It's pretty damn sad. I'm starting to lose faith. I must admit, the stuff is starting to depress me. Black Clover fans this week. <laughs> Being a Black Clover fan is tough. But this chapter is the reason why we all love this series. Tabata did it. We had faith in him and he's fixed some parts of the art. My guy really pulled out one of the best plot twists we've had in years. And I know that we've been super critical on this arc lately. But one thing I want to make clear from now on. Because I'm tired of repeating myself. Especially since we've critiqued the likes of Boruto, Dragon Ball Super, Attack on Titan and others in the past in a similar way. At this point of of time you guys should be our bastions that spread this across our community if someone is being negative there is a very fine line between critiquing something and hating on it but obviously in the anime community there are a lot of false narratives that are spread regarding yourself due to being a public figure for example currently there is an illogical fallacy floating around after we gave our critique of the past black clover chapters that there is a notion that we are making black clover content for clout and views and are hating on it to get more popular oh abd evil yeah guys fuck this guy i don't know how that makes any logical sense because we have been covering black clover since 2019 before it was even popular and even had a community and if i wanted to do things for views and just for views why would i ever critique any manga we cover on this channel but due to integrity we still voiced our honest opinion which a majority of you agreed with why does it have to equate to us hating on Black Clover. The reason we are so harsh on this series is because we genuinely love it and want it to reach its potential. As a fan, opinions can be changed when new information is brought to the table. And although I still think our previous two videos on Lucifero are still valid because this arc has definitely had some very low moments, most notably with the devils as characters, if many of the theories we will explain in this video end up being true, then it recontextualizes the entire arc no wait not even the arc i'm talking about the entire story we have a potential reason why the heroes won due to time manipulation a lot of stuff can be forgiven like imagine tabata makes this more meta than we think and that the devils were repeating the same nonsense every fight because time kept repeating the event and they didn't know Whoa. Black Clover chapter 331 begins with Yuno meeting his mother. Hold up. Wait a minute. She was alive the entire time? What? They kept that one quiet. I mean, why didn't Ralph just mention that? Regardless, the current queen consort of the Spade Kingdom, Seal Green Burial, and her son Yuno have a heart to heart. Whilst Yuno's army of simps asks if he plans to stay in the Spade Kingdom, but he explains how the future is uncertain. However, he has made vows that must be kept to the Clover Kingdom, his friends, and of course, Asta. That's right, guys. Yuno. His first day of his life is now over. It's the best day now. Oh, right. It actually gets worse. Meanwhile, Asta is thankful towards his brother Lieber, as it was him who helped Asta realize he was truly loved by his mother, to which Lieber says he should be thanking Asta, as it was together with him that he was able to avenge Lysitha and achieve his goal, meaning it's now his time to help Asta achieve his dream of being Wizard King. Um... Little did they know that the fourth Socrates was the one that helped them all along. I'm so excited, guys. You don't understand how hyped I am. Just wait, wait a second. Which is when both Asta and Yuno then simultaneously state how they will become the Wizard King as they always do. It's been revealed Black Clover is entering its final saga, which is going to explore the strongest Wizard King of all time, that being Asta, Yuno, and many others. Something interesting about all of this though is that Yuno learned of his mother's survival, whilst Asta learned of his mother's death. Tabata loves dualities and contrasts 
chaos to an extreme point. And with that in mind, we also know that Yuno's father is dead. If Tabata continues this trend, then it's very likely that Asta's dad is still alive and out there. Contrary to the common belief that Asta's dad died for that uh, Lisi Tussi, remember we were all wondering who risked it all getting his life sucked out, literally. So, our two-year-old theory could end up being true, that Asta Roth is indeed Asta's father, who created the boy that was required to kill Lucifero. This will make a lot more sense if you watch this entire video till the end. Anyway, we see Asta discussing his ideals regarding the world he envisions, and how he will make everyone see Lieber as a good guy. Asta is a wanted man, and has been given the death sentence, and the royals are still corrupt, so it falls down to how things proceed from here if he were to achieve his dream. But you will notice that Asta is situated upon the infamous clock tower. The clock tower starts ticking again. <laughs> Now what does this mean? Well that's why I'm here silly, you silly willy. Hit the notification bell and you wouldn't miss out. Essentially, the number one plot device we have to keep in mind is that there are three kings of hell. One of them is the time devil, the devil of the fourth Socrates, Lucius. This clock tower hints at the fact that throughout this entire arc, Lucius had been manipulating the timeline of certain events. But you're probably wondering, where is the evidence for this ABD? Okay, so the clock is attempting to tick forward. This is huge, because over the past 57 chapters, we have witnessed this exact clock tower periodically during the arc. However, as many of you know, the time on it never seems to make sense. In its introduction in chapter 274, the time shows roughly 636. Following this, the invasion on the spade begins. The cliff of tree sprouts, releasing an ancient demon, and we see the clock again showing the same time. This makes sense as the invasion was meticulously planned out by Nock, therefore the invasion would just take moments to fulfill thanks to Nock's shadow magic. In the next few chapters up to 284, including moments like the lower tier devils being let loose, the dark triad reaching 100%, Norma and Lilith as well as the ancient demon showing up in the Clover Kingdom, which Asta defeats using his Devil Union for the first time, the clock at this time is shown to say around 6.45, which seems about right. But then, we see Asta vs Norma and Lilith in his Devil Union again. We also see that when Norma and Lilith combine to use their large sun attack to destroy the country, the time has been rewinded 10 minutes or so to 6.45. 36, which would have been before Asta's fight with the ancient demon, meaning that presumably how his devil union recharged so fast considering it would normally need a 30 minute cooldown. Following on from this, we get Lucifero's manifestation, where Asta states the 30 minutes are up and he uses devil union again. He subsequently is defeated by Lucifero, but as the demon king Ox and Dremel for help against Yuno and Siskolion so he can focus on killing Asta, he realizes Asta has gone. And we see the clock tower yet again showing the time to be around 7.28, resulting in nearly a one hour skip, which is the time we then see in chapter 331 right now, as time begins to flow again. I think what's happened is that Lucius kept manipulating time to get the outcome he desires most. For example, against Nama and Lilith, Asta may have in fact died, but he saw that Asta would be needed to kill Lucifero, which is why he then rewinded time so that Asta would win with his union mode or make it there on time to save Nark. Remember, look at the chapter, Asta just arrives on the nick of time, killing them. It would help explain the sheer amount of plot convenience all of the characters have had throughout this arc, such as, you know, Asta's infamous broken leg that Lucifero would have created in chapter 325, but in the next chapter, it's disappeared and he's moving fine, as if it didn't happen. 
This would explain why nobody has died no matter the odds, as everything was manipulated to go smoothly. Because the entire climax of the Lucifero fight, as well as the aftermath of it, it all happened at 7.28. But clearly Arthur said he was using 5 minutes of his devil union, and he did say he had 2 minutes left. So the numbers are not adding up. Well you got me. By all accounts it doesn't make sense. In this chapter, it finally moves to 729. And as the name of the chapter alludes to, this is time finally moving as normal again. I seriously can't imagine all of the Lucifero fight and the aftermath all happening in under a minute. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't even match Aster's own dialogue, even for Black Clover. So this proves that time was stopped. So to break this down in more simple terms, remember when Doctor Strange used time to see multiple outcomes and said there is only one way where the heroes would win against Thanos? Essentially, the fourth Zocratus, Lucius, has been using the Time Devil to make sure the outcomes of events turn out victorious for the heroes. That way they all survive and Lucifero could die. He wanted Lucifero's heart to complete his plan and that would then fix multiple plot holes. Now don't get me wrong, not all plot devices have been magically fixed by this twist we have been introduced to, right? Major flaws still exist in this arc, such as Lucifero still being trash and boring, and Rill's Valhalla spell stopping death, that still exists. But the point is, it all depends on Tabata's writing right now. He can potentially fix most of the issues using time, especially since he has a minimum 3 month break to think of ideas and plan the next arc, which means we are going to get peak. And I mean big yes, back yes, lower yes, constantly yes. and I'm so excited for our community. Hear me, So in the end, the story is implying that there's countless other timelines where Asta and everyone died, but Lucius and Asta Roth kept resetting it, freezing it until he got the one where Asta won without slicing Lucifero's heart. It would also explain why Andremelec didn't interfere. He said it's more fun just to watch because he was excited to see if this time the desired outcome would come into fruition. On top of that, remember last week? I mentioned how the Dark Triad waited 6 months for no reason just to make the heroes get stronger? Well, obviously the truth is, Lucius, their older brother would want them to do so because he needs Asta to get stronger to defeat Lucifero. Now remember, our community sharing our mana and analysis together, we predicted the 4th Socrates because we kept going on about the Dark Triad actually being a Tetrad. The 4th sibling having all of the traits of the Dark Triad triad including sadism, defined as the enjoyment of cruelty. Which pretty much tells us the mindset Lucius Zocratis has. He used his own siblings for his master plan. For example, his own brother Dante was utilized to lure Lucifer out of hell, just so he can die and take his heart. He gave Medjucula to Vonica and pretended she's one of the high ranking kings, or queens should I say, and also manipulated Zenon into taking Beelzebub by making sure his friend Alan died by the hands of a devil that he planted himself on their mission, Lucius has manipulated his own family. Now whether or not he brings them back, that's up to Tabata. He's left the writing on the wall for that to be possible since time is involved. Time can do anything in the story and Lucius did promise his siblings immortal bodies. Even in the cover page, the siblings are linked to the river Styx, which is an ancient Greek story linked to immortality, which he suggested to his brother Zenon. But back to chapter 300. 31. Julius is discussing the events of the war, where he thinks to himself that although it ended alright, something doesn't add up. He has flashbacks to times during the war where he felt uneasy. Suddenly, Julius' facial expressions change drastically, as if he has just been hit with a sudden wave of realization. As Damnatio enters the room, he comes to speak with Julius regarding information he has gathered on the devils since the time of 
of Oster's trial. He found documents dating back to more than 20 years ago regarding the highest ranking devils and how Majukula is not one of them. If you stuck around on our channel, you would know why she is not. As in, in real life of the Cliff of Tree, the Kabbalah stuff that Tabata is inspired from, Majukula doesn't even exist. The real three rulers of hell are of course Lucifero, the gravity devil, Beelzebub, the spatial devil, and last but not least, Astaroth, the time devil. Astaroth is here. Can we just celebrate for a moment? We've been saying this for two years, bruh. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Astaroth somehow vanished from the underworld and was thus replaced by Majukula as one of the three supreme devils. According to demonology, should you ask Astaroth about the past, present or future, he would happily respond with nothing but the truth of the secrets only he knows. Although he is not a threat to humanity as far as physical danger is concerned, he is fond of manipulation and corruption that is intellectual in nature. Now as you guys know me, I have read countless devil books to research the series of Black Clover and the inspiration Tabata had to create the story. But I cannot explain everything all in this one video, otherwise it will be just way too long. So let's get to 30,000 likes, no 40, now 50,000 likes guys! And I promise you I will deliver more Black Clover videos explaining the lore and the other storylines that you have missed. Even though there's not going to be Black Clover manga for 3 months, at least you have our videos. So the confrontation continues. Damnatio confronts Julius, saying how only one person in history has ever used time magic, which is when Damnatio's suspicions are confirmed by Julius himself. He is in fact the host of Astaroth. He asks Damnatio to restrain him as he suddenly remembers his connections to the time devil. But it's too late as Lucius takes over his consciousness. Okay everyone, you know know how it goes from here. You guys shared your mana with us, which means of course that balls deep prediction magic came true again. You know what editor, just play the clip bringing up anyway. On top of this, I want to draw a similarity between Zenon and Julius, and that's a visual one. As we've already established, Julius has transformation magic and can alter his entire appearance. So let's say, hypothetically, Julius transformed the colour of his hair from black to blonde? Yeah? No? Maybe? How would he look like with black hair anyway? Oh my god, just like Zenon, he's basically an older Zocratis sibling. This guy is fucking stupid! Yes, that is right. This means that this entire time, Lucius was hiding within Julius, laying dormant until the time was right, subtly pushing Julius to manipulate what was happening, as Julius wasn't aware of his wrongdoings up until now that the spell has worn off. Lucius then drains the time from Damnatio and discards his disguise, revealing his true form as the fourth Zagratis sibling, and his real grimoire which features two, not one, two spades! And as many people in the community have pointed out, if you take a little close look, you know, you do a little bit of tomfoolery here and there, it actually looks a little bit like the grimoire features all four nation's symbols. But anyway, finally, Adremelech shows up with Lucifero's heart, stating, It really turned out the way you thought it would, Lucius Zagratis. Yes, yet another prediction that our community got correct, which is when we see a full facial shot of him with black hair and a brand new forehead marking. Now, the name Lucius has many meanings. For one, it means light in Latin, which if you actually look at chapter 36's colour page with Julius sitting there smirking all menacingly, it's only bloody cold light, what? meaning that it had a double identity all along. 
As before, we all just presumed the title referenced the fact that Patry showed up, who went under the identity of Licht at the time, which obviously also means light. And of course, Patry ended up being a soul trapped within a separate body. But as Adil mentioned, the entire manga has been recontextualized as this has become a double entendre. As the same goes for Lucius, he too is also in another body. So not only did both characters have a separate identity, Entity, this chapter specifically did too, and it was in our face the entire time. But the name Lucius also means that you are ahead of your time. Your intelligence and brightness will enable you to achieve great things in your lifetime. You are a master builder and respected by many as an authority on many subjects, which of course sounds a hell of a lot like Julius slash Lucius to me. The marking on his forehead is based on the Cliff of Kabbalah devil shit, but listen right, I'm not reading all that stuff, okay? Adil can sacrifice himself, do what he wants, have the weirdest looking Google search history on the planet, I don't care, okay? We're saving that for another time. But in the end, the fact remains that the reveal of Lucius has been heavily foreshadowed throughout the entire series. Now, we can see that clearly Julius wasn't actually evil because he's had so many internal monologues that indicate he wished for the genuine safety of his kingdom. On top of that, he even tried to get Damnatio to either restrain or straight up kill him as he realised the truth in this chapter. Now, many fans theorise that maybe be, Lucius's magic is to do with the mind or soul, which he used to erase Julius's mind until now, or made a devil contract with forbidden magic which would cause the outcome he desires. This would explain that when the Cliffoth tree began to sprout, Julius became more and more confused about everything, as the appearance of the Cliffoth probably made Lucius's identity become more and more prominent, giving Julius a sort of identity crisis. It also fits in with the rest of the Zagratis siblings. After all, Dante had body magic, Vanica had blood magic, and Zenon had bone magic. All that is missing is the mind or soul. Despite that though, Lucius would have still been subtly influencing behind the scenes the entire time like I said, which is why Julius just so happened to take both Yami and William under his wing. Two arcane stage mages needed for the Cliffoth ritual. Think of it a little bit like how Patrick subconsciously influenced William's decision making into recruiting some of the elves into the Golden Dawn. The story has made it very clear that Julius loves finding new magic. He even transformed into an old lady disguised so that he could see more interesting concepts. Likewise, this is why he took an interest in Aster. He was the old hag that met him without them knowing and when he wielded Aster's sword, he realised its anti-magic ability the perfect counter for Lucifero. Just take a look at this panel. It's such an evil smirk once he finds out about the anti-magic. And then he immediately knew that Aster had no magic, before Aster could even tell him anything. And now, just so you know, the anti-magic would not have dispelled any effects or contracts Lucius would have had with Julius at that moment, because it wasn't the third sword which has the casualty break ability, so the writing still makes sense, it's not a plot hole. I know we'll want to talk about them, but gotta defend it. It's good ass writing. Now, another plot device that we all kept mentioning in the Anime Balls Deep community was the inconsistency regarding Asta's mother finding the five leaf grimoire. But even that could be fixed with this writing, as pointed out by Gabby over on our Twitter. Go follow us there if you haven't already. That's slight plug. Remember how we were all wondering where the heck would the book be if Lieber was stuck inside it for 15 years and was in the middle of absolutely smack bang nowhere. On top of that, Secre as the bird Nero had told us that she was watching over it for 500 years, but that clearly isn't the case. Lucius must have done a little bit of his freaky weaky manipulation finding out about Lucifero's attempt 
attempt to come out through Lieber and failing, thus finding out the location of the book and then getting the book himself, or using Julius's curiosity to his advantage. Julius, or Lucius in his exploration, could have found this book but didn't know what magic it contained, nor was it owned by anyone as Licht had died. Remember when Julius admitted that in his curiosity he found the Swallowtail, the first Wizard King's device from 500 years ago? That gave him a rune on his head that literally revived him, so all of the plot threads have already been set in place. Therefore, this would explain chapter one. Yes, I gotta say it again, alright? We need to reinterpret the entire series all the way back from the very beginning. Chapter one, Uno, motherfucker. That's how insane this chapter is, and we're gonna have to create oh, so many videos. I'm so excited, my god. Goodness. Anyway, for example, have you ever wondered why the grimoire was randomly placed in a castle wall near Aster's village? Which, by the way, we confirmed to you guys that village is where Aster's mother lived nearby, as the outskirts is where all the low-ranked people lived, but she was outcasted. This means Lucius and Astaroth waited to find out who would claim that grimoire, and then when they found out that Aster had obtained it, read its book, and it was anti magic, he smirked and immediately knew the truth behind it all. This is because Lucius Zagratis was searching for this magic all along. It was the final piece of the puzzle of his plan to make sure Lucifera died so that he could retrieve his heart. The fourth Zagratis wants to oppress everyone through time. Remember, Julius has been using this type of magic which is said to steal people's future, but he uses it in a good way to save them from death. However, the fourth Zagratis wants to be immortal. This means the devil magic steals from someone's time for the user itself, and therefore can achieve this dream he mentioned to Zenon. And so, it's safe to presume that Lucifera's heart is linked to this dream of his, as it can be utilised to help with his plan. Julius Nova Chrono is the only character we have seen so far that can read the writing in other people's grimoires and the ancient texts, which only further proves Lucius and Astroth's influence in the story, as they have knowledge no one else possesses, giving them access to a dream that others wouldn't understand nor comprehend. This is why Julius paid so much attention to Aster in the early arcs, because he wanted him to train, get stronger, and gather the elf stones to fulfil what he had eventually planned for him in the Dark Triad arc. And there's also one last thing I want to ask you guys. Remember Zenon's flashback where we saw Lucius in a wheelchair? That was 15 years ago, but Astaroth disappeared 20 years ago. Ever wonder why that's the case? Hmm? Well, ding that notification bell and stick around because, like I said, I don't know if anyone's told you this, but we've got a, we've got a few videos planned and you don't want to be missing them. And so, if you've got anything about yourself, I'll be seeing you over there.